What we have here is an Astra. Um, we, we would call it a Model 400. They call it a Model 1921. This is a real early one. And a part on this gun suffered from metal fatigue. We don't have all of it. This is not a bag job. It's a straight up replacement. What we got was the transfer bar to this thing. And it's got a big blob of weld here. And it's got a big blob of weld there. And it kind of used to look like that. Well, you see, I own my own welder, so I can burn the corners off my own parts. Let's get on a rabbit hole and figure out how to reverse engineer something that they just don't have in the 24-hour Astro parts store. Let's go. So where do you begin with this? What are we trying to do here? We know that the trigger, which rotates on this pinhole right here like this, we know that the trigger is going to push on this bar through this blob of weld right here. And in this notch, you can actually see a distinct notch right here. That notch is grabbing the end of the sear. So when you push back on the trigger, it shoves the, shoves the sear back and drops the hammer. As soon as the slide breaks out and starts to move, there's an indent cut into this slide right here. And this piece is up inside of this. And as soon as the slide begins to move, it shoves it down, knocking it out of connection with the sear, allowing the sear to recock the hammer. And then when you turn the, the, uh, turn the trigger loose, it'll come forward. Okay, that's great. We know what it does. What are the constraints on its motion here? Well, there's a hole here and a magazine safety that sits in this. So as this is sticking out, and I'm going to exaggerate it here and just get it out to where you can see it. As that part is sticking out, the magazine, let's, let's do this. Here you go. So it's engaging on the bottom of this right here. So when you put a magazine in it, this will rotate out of the way and allow the trigger to come to the rear. All right. So we know pretty much the forward most motion of the trigger is going to be right there. So why do we need to know that? There's a hole in this piece, and that hole is over that hole, see? So that's where we know the forward part of this is, and then we got to know where the rearward part of it's going to be, and there's some things we don't know about it. Sharpie time on the blue towel. All right. We have a distance here, and then we have a distance coming around the corner here, all right? And we know we've got a pinhole that goes through like that, right? So this is a pin. We're just going to call it that so that it's obvious that it's a pin, right? So this is a definable arc. So we're eating up distance. We can't just say it's from, you know, we need to have that tab over here. We don't know where we have to have the tab, right? So that piece is going to be sitting there. So we don't know how big that's got to be. So what we're going to wind up doing is we'll measure this, we'll get close in, and we'll put a large, a large tab on that. All right. Now that'll be rotated up, obviously, but we'll put a large tab on it. This will have to be heated up and bent. This has to be a pretty sharp corner. The magazine fits in here like this. This is the mag. So we got to get around the front edge of this magazine, right? Got to get around that. This trigger has to be free to swing. So as it's free to swing, this moves in and out, right? So all this has to play nicely in the same sandbox. And then eventually we get back here and we have a, um, we have a notch. Hang on a minute. Bruno's going to move the camera for me. We have a notch that's going to grab the sear. So the sear is right here, right? So we don't know the distance from here around the corner and out to this hole. We don't know that distance. So we're going to wing this. You can sit here and you can calculate it. And guys that bend conduit for a living know how to do take-ups and all that other stuff. We're smithing here. Time is money. We got to get on with this. So what we're going to do is leave a little bit of extra material. And we're going to leave extra material in the front and in the back. And then we're going to trim it all to fit. You've heard that amateurs practice until they get it right. 
and pros practice till they don't get it wrong. In this particular case, amateurs will expend time to save materials, and I intend to expend materials to save time. Let's cut some metal. I have uh, obtained a piece of spring steel here, and what I'm going to do, here, let me lay this out here and show you what I'm talking about. Because we really don't know the distance when we're sweeping around the corner on that one part, we're going to cut this out. Just let me see if this white shows up at all. That white showing up. Yeah, it does. Good. We'll cut this out. I'll measure it a little bit closer, but I'm going to cut a piece of steel out that looks like that. Okay, so you ask yourself, well, well, no, because we're leaving a lot of material to work with. We've got to get this front end figured out first. We've got to get the bend put in. We've got to drill the hole. We've got to do all that. Here it is. And when we're all done with that, then we can come back here because what we don't know, the wild card here, is we don't know what's missing in this blob. How much of this part got burned? We don't really truly know the distance between that screw hole and the top of that actuating bar. We really don't know that number. So we'll just remove material till we get there. This will be a gross hack and it'll give us something to hang on to. It'll give us a way to grab it in the universal work holding system. I'm gonna pop over to my bandsaw and just cut this out, I'll be right back. So I've cut this part out now. And this is our blank, right? And there's a little bit of a kick here we gotta look at. There's definitely a 90 degree turn here we're gonna get. So the first thing we're gonna wind up doing is clamping this thing in the universal work holding system and making this a true straight edge, making this a true straight edge that's this wide because I'm not trying to re-engineer this thing. This would have been a significantly harder thing to do if you're working from a picture or we did not have this weld blobs and all. I know I'm kind of running uphill, so I'm just taking it and setting it on the vise right here so that all I'm trying to do is square it up. I'm not trying to get square, I'm just trying to square it up. So all it does is squares that angle up and then we'll come in and mark off the distance we need to have here. So I've got an old pair of, um, of calipers that are no longer being used as calipers and I actually use them as dividers. These aren't being used anymore. So what I'm doing here is sacrilege if these were actually measuring devices, but they're not. They're just designed that I can sit here and scratch I can scratch on here and make a white line and I'll see if I can't show that to you, but I'm actually making a silver line in here. So Okay. Oh, uh, let me see. I'm looking into my Oh yeah, yeah. Jeez, you can't see that. Okay, but you never do that with a pair. These are so these things are so jank. It's surprising that they don't just Scream and yell and fall apart and jump off the bench. Cutting on the push stroke only. You're not pulling back. So it's this is the pressure profile. So I come down a little bit further. Keep going here. I didn't have it. 
And it's set down a little bit too much there. Part of it is, is my eyes suck. This corner right in here when we're all done, I want that to be, you see how the pencil's round. I want there to be a round transition because I don't want there to be a stress crack in there. So I'm not going to run this up in there tight. We'll come back later when we push this edge back, wherever this winds up being, there'll be a round transition up and a round transition out so we don't have a stress riser there because that's where stuff cracks. I've cut my piece of stock down now to that line. Let's get the light to shine on it. You can see the line right there and cut that straight out. So I got that the right way. I've ground that blob of weld off of this thing just so I can get that third dimension off. And I've also ground the blob of weld off here and I've redrawn it. So this is essentially what we're making in profile. And this is in plan looking down from the top. The reason why we're a little bit proud here is there's a kick in this thing. I don't know if you can see this. There's a, let me get the, the shadow shining on it. Right there, there's a little kick in it. So it kind of, it kind of comes out. You see, it kind of comes out just a little bit. It goes that way and comes up like that. Okay, we'll, we'll get that in there. I'm not really worrying about that. Um, but here's kind of what we're making. So now we know because we have the frame available. Let me get this set back in here. We know here that that's going to set up. We also know that that has to grab, this has to grab, this shiny spot right here is the end of the sear. So this hook has got to grab that, right? So when you pull the trigger, it's going to push this backwards and it's going to shove this out of engagement and the hammer will fall. And that we're limited in our upward motion by a cut on the inside here. There's actually a cut up in here that limits how far north this can go. So watch, you'll see it snap, right? Right there, you see it snap? So that's us, that, that's our presentation. So a lot of this has been lined up for us. <clears throat> we know that the trigger can come back to about there based on the safety, so that's good. So what I wanna do is slide the leading edge of this up a bunch, all right? I want the leading edge of that, well, let me get that in the light there, there we go. I want the leading edge of that up here because I want to have to remove material from this side. We know we're going to have to remove a bunch of it from back here, I'm not sweating that. But if I get this turn wrong, I don't want to have to make this part again. I want tons of material, we'll just cut it. So we're going to say right about there and then we're going to make the turn and put the bend in it. <clears throat> okay, so. This part right here has to have a bend in it that looks kind of like this, all right? I'm gonna try to get the blue towel behind it. There's the bend, and that's what we're gonna bend it around. And then it's got a sharp edge right here when we come up on center line. So we'll make the bend first, and then we'll determine where we want the center line to be. We'll grab it in a vise and just pop it around like that. Yeah, okay. Now comes the point in time where we're going to have to actually bend metal. And we know that we're going to be right about there. And I know I'm doing this all up in the air, but the, the edge of our bend is going to have to be right about there. And that's, you're going to have to trust me on this one. There we go. So I drew a line on it. There's the line. And that's where we're going to have to roll out. So the majority of our bends got to be behind that line right there, like that. So we're going to do a 90 degree turn. We're going to come around the corner. We'll put this thing up in a vise, get it hot, and go ahead and bend it. So what I'm trying to do with the universal work holding system here is bifurcate this drill halfway and trap it. And as I'm tapping down on the drill on, on this bit, this is rolling around and when I get it so that it's 90 degrees here to here, I'll be there and I'm pretty damn close. Okay. Now, I can hear the comments already. Mark, that is one jank ass setup. And you're right, it is, but it's what we got. So we'll put heat here 
and we'll roll this thing around 90 degrees. And then we'll come back out, rejig it, and bend this actually. We're gonna bend it over 90 and then we're just gonna pick it up in the same setup and roll it up. And that'll give us both bends at the same time. Just, just take my word for it. This is definitely an application for the magic smoke. The vice is going to wick a lot of this heat off, so we're, we're not going to be able to get it all the way red. It's coming around. Let's see, I might need a little more heat. Technically, I should have an oxy-settling torch in this setup. Important safety tip, this hammer is going to get hot. Ask me how I know. Okay, we got a little bit of a flare back there we'll have to take out, but basically we came around this corner without putting any cracks in this thing. We rolled around. Now all this is hot. Just saying. So I've clamped it on the line I want to bend it on. There's something to note. While we're driving this, this mass wants to bend. That's why we had a little lilt in here. There's a little, because it will as we hit it, it wants to stay put and put a bend in it. I've got this jig in the vise backwards because if I jig it the way I ordinarily would, turn around the other way, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to be right in front of you. So I'm going to work this backwards. And what we did was, that was a 7 16 drill bit we used. So 7 16 is 14 30 seconds and half of that is 7 30 seconds. And wouldn't you know it, a 7 30 seconds drill bit just fits perfectly because we're at one half. What I'm trying to do is apply the force here. So I want this bend to occur this way and this whole thing to stand up. And we're not even going to use any heat here. We're just going to get this moving. And you know you're hitting it right when all the energy from the hammer goes right down the punch. Okay. It's beginning to bend right there. But now I can get the punch up in there now that the drill bit's gone. See it really moving now. halfway up and we're going to come around a little bit more on that bend. We're going to pull it out, check it, heat it up red with a torch to let it cool off because we're work hardening it. And if we make this bend too tight, even on a quality piece of steel, we'll rip it. It'll tear. And we don't want to tear it because as we get into making this part, we got a lot of labor tied up in this thing and we'd like to not have to make it again like that and it tore and it snapped right off and I should have stress relieved it. So I'll go back and make another one of these. Stand by and we'll pick it up right here. All right, so I made another one and got, got the bent corner bend, a little bit of file work in order to make the nose here. We center pop, uh, drilled the hole, 
opened the hole up and then went ahead and put the whole spring loaded gizmo back together again so we can get up inside the gun and figure out what the heck the rest of this part's going to look like like this we're now at a point where we can actually determine what the heck this part looks like so we've got the spring loaded that plunger is moving up and down inside here so as we're against this the bottom of that finger is pushing up in there and it's giving us this and what that's going to do if i restrict this and you see it'll just pull it forward and that's our trigger return spring the other thing we know is this this is the magazine safety we talked about that very early on we know that in order for this to actually be a safety and you can see all this tolerance winding up out of all this if you wind all this up we do not want the hook we do not want this hook right here to be in contact with the sear when the safety is doing safety things. Only when the magazine goes in and the safety rotates out of the way do we want it to be able to do sear things. So that's going to give us this little magical setup here. I'm going to bend this down to where you see where that notch is. Okay, hang on a minute. There's the sear, right? So we know that this is going to grab, let me get this thing out of the way here. Yeah, there we go. We know that that's going to push on that part right there. It's going to push on that silver, this silver dot right here is the end of the sear. And if I shove it back hard enough right now, it'll drop the hammer. There's still a live spring in here and I don't want to do this. So we know we don't want to be in a position to push. So we want to be in limbo somewhere right here. When we get on it so what that tells us is we engage that it's kind of awkward with the spring in but i don't want to have to take that back out again if i can get away with it we know right there and i'm looking straight down on it the camera is not giving you the angle but this is where it is when i'm looking straight down on it right there is where the part has to be so now we know exactly what this looks like and i had already drawn it it's right here right and it's right here and we can make that a little bit long so now i can come in and cut all this material away with a hacksaw we can get rid of all of this can go away right so that's the next thing I'm going to do is cut that away. And we're going to have a part that's going to begin to look suspiciously like what it was we broke in the first place. Remember, we want to have that curve in here. So I'm just going to get this close and then clean it up with files. I don't want to come completely down on what it is what we're doing. And I'm going to be able to just come straight in like this. Okay, we do that. A little bit of metal fatigue, you. Very good. And getting closer, getting closer. You can do this.
We're getting closer now. It's starting to look like a part. There's a lot of excess in here and we'll be removing all this excess with files because it gives us a lot more control than by doing it with a hacksaw. So we have arrived at the point why that last piece broke. Because in order to get this in, you have to flex it around the corner. This actually has to bend ever so slightly. So we've done this. We got that matched up pretty close. What I have not done is cut that notch because I'm not going to cut that notch until I've got it in the gun and I can see what's going on. As close as we can figure, this has to go in and then bend around the corner. We really haven't figured out the right way to do it. I don't know if it's stick the trigger in first, stick it in last. We haven't figured that out. What I found up inside the frame, there were some burrs up in here. There were some, a little bit of roughs. This thing had been beat on a little bit. Well, yeah, so we got the part now pretty much fit all the way down. We've got our notch cut here to match the notch. This is the part that was broken. This is the part that we replicated it with. And could we have welded this together? Sure, but then you're talking about different metals. This has, it has to have a slight spring component to it. A lot going on here, and let's remember that I'm told that this, this particular gun is kind of brutal in, uh, in, in Nine Largo. So we want to make sure that we're, you know, not doing anything really stupid. So you would think that this would slide through kind of this way. And it does. And it's a tight fit, I'm going to tell you. Because it's got to come up in there. And you see how this is flexed? So we got it. We figured it out. You drop it down in there, and you're going to have to tap on it with a, with, a, uh, with a punch. I had to move over to the universal work holding system here in order to grab it because there's not a lot of space in order to kind of milk this thing through. you got to hit it on the top, and then you got to go on the bottom. And there's a spot right where we're dragging on the frame, and I mean not by much. As you can see, I'm not beating the Terwillikers out of this thing. I'm just kind of milking it here, and we'll get it through right there. There it goes. So you didn't have to hit it that hard, and then that goes up inside there. And now the trigger's up inside the aperture. Now, 
the first eight or 10 or 12 or 14 times I tried to put this gun together, it didn't go together that easy, all right? So we'll roll this around and you can see that pinhole right there. And it's still a bit of a pain in the neck. You gotta get up in here and shove that forward. And then I take a pin and stick it in from behind and see if I can impale it here. Hold on a minute. This pin, I'm gonna take this pin here, shove this in from the rear and see how the trigger kind of moves forward like that. And we're looking to see where that hole is, if we can get that hole that's inside there to line up. You see how that lined up? So now we know that that's about right. We'll push that punch in and hang on to it, pull this out, stick this assembly pin in here and see if we can't get all this to go in and that rolls up and sits down. So as the slide moves, it disengages this piece right here, all right? So when we pull back, I'm gonna push in on the grip safety so we can do that. And we push this in, that will allow the hammer to come up. Now I don't want the hammer to slap the frame. You'll bend it just like on a 1911, you'll start messing the frame up. But then when it's back like that, okay, it's got the sear back, the slide comes out of battery, pushes down on this piece and causes that to reset. All right, so that's our reset feature. And then when you turn the trigger loose, this will snap back up and go back into position. That was everything we were trying to do. The rest of this is just put some little fiddly bits back in it. There's a um, magazine safety that sits up in here and it's really obvious. You just, that will go up inside and the pin will go through it. You'll get there. If you're doing something like this, you're, this is not where you begin learning how to do gunsmithing. A couple other things I wanna bring up while we're holding this shot here was all of this beating, all of this beating really gave my hammers a workout. So this hammer here and definitely the red one got a real beating up on the face and these need to get polished. So remember, when you come out of doing quasi gunsmith, you know, quasi blacksmithing like this, go back in and repolish your hammer faces, tune your tools back up. Um, I used to have two sets of tools for this, unnecessary. I just re, re, uh, requalify my hammers when I'm ready to go. Let's, um, let's, let's put the grips back on this thing and I'm gonna show you the grips. The grips have this, I don't know what happened. So when this is all done, this is Bruno's gun, obviously. So when this is all done, I'll tighten this up. This gun will look good. But let's take, put this thing back together again and, and, and go see if it works. So during this entire live fire session, we are expecting this gun to go fully automatic. We're expecting it to go fully automatic. So we have only two rounds in the magazine we we'll put one in the chamber this thing is stout i'm going to tell you what but it stopped remove we're going to grab one more and you put one in the chamber so we're empty here but there is one in the gun so then we put one more in the mag it stopped again good sign we're gonna do this two or three more times before we even remotely trust this thing. Never give a gun a full mag to work with after you've done any fire control work. And I mean, taking it apart and cleaning it. I'm gonna tell you something about this nine Largo. This pig is stout. I'm gonna do that one more time. And then we're gonna make sure that the slide locks back. So this time I'll give it two more. All right, we're making headway here. I gotta checker the grips on this thing because they've been, had the schmooze put in them, we'll conserve it. But the big thing was, it actually goes off now and that's, that's the save. Um, gun work like this is a little, ethereal there's no way that we don't we didn't have any drawings to work with god i don't even know if these guys had drawings to work with they were pounding these things out world war one and in between the wars they were making them as fast as they could make them 
big gun, nine millimeter Largo, intense. Gotta love it. And as always, it's been a pleasure.